Hi, my name is Jim Heath, and I'm the president of the Institute for Systems Biology, and I'm here today with two of my colleagues, one of um, my co-faculty members, Professor Sean Gibbons, and senior research scientist in Sean's lab, Christian Diener. And Sean and Christian have just published a paper in Nature Metabolism describing more or less a detailed analysis that I think you can sum up as you are what you eat. Um, at the ISB, we know we're known for measuring lots of omics, the genome, the proteome, the transcriptome, the metabolome. Most of those omics you can connect back to the genome because transcripts are basically little copies of genes. Uh, proteins are the machines made by the transcripts, but the metabolome all the metabolites in your body is a vast diversity of molecules that is actually not directly explained by the genome. And so one of the frontiers in the field is to try to connect it to the genome and to connect it to other parts of your body. For example, the gut microbiome, which is what Sean and Christian are working on. Okay, what's the punchline? Is, is the genome the thing that, that determines most or is it the microbiome? Yeah, I think like uh, intrinsically we would like to hear that like, you know, most of the metabolites in our blood are made by us, but actually it turns out that um, if we look at everything where we found an association, then 70% of those associations were actually driven by the gut microbiome, so the microbes oh. living in our gut. And only about 16% of those associations were really specific to our own genes. Um, but we also found like a subset of about 15% of those associations where it was kind of not that clear. So where one part of the variation of the metabolite was driven by our genome, but then an additional part was also driven by the microbes and organ. Sean, you've been looking at the microbiome for a while. And in this atlas that you pieced together, um, were you surprised by anything you found? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I, I would say I was somewhat surprised. Like Christian said, we found a, a fair number of these hybrid associations where both the genome and the microbiome seem to be contributing to explaining the variability in a metabolite, but they, they seem to be completely independent of one another, right? So whatever the genome was doing to that metabolite in the blood, the microbiome was doing something else to it, and those things weren't talking to each other. Uh, and you could add the variation together and explain more of the metabolite uh, without any overlap. Um, so it seems like, yeah, there's an orthogonality between what the genome is doing uh, and what the microbes are doing. Uh, but there's also these interaction effects, right, where, you know, a particular genetic background, uh, suddenly you see the emergence of an association between a metabolite and a microbe that didn't exist in other genetic backgrounds. Um, so I don't know, it just it's, it, it sort of paints a, a really complex picture of the interplay going on between the microbes and the genome. And overall, you know, what we really want to get out of this work is, is to provide a resource to the community where, you know, say you want to therapeutically alter the abundance of a given metabolite in the blood that's affecting, right. say, heart disease or, or what have you. Um, well, you want to know at the onset, is that metabolite largely controlled by the host, by the genome? Uh, if so, you might want to target host enzymes or host pathways with a drug. However, if that metabolite is largely governed by what's going on in your diet and in your gut, well, that metabolite is amenable to lifestyle intervention or even prebiotic, probiotic, or dietary intervention. So the ways in which you intervene uh, from, a, from a healthcare perspective on the body will, will change depending on um, the answer to, those, to that question. Cool. All right, awesome work, guys. Thanks. Thank you.